Hello and welcome back to the Avalon Answers series. I appreciate everybody that has come into this webinar. It's been a great time for me and hopefully you've learned some different ways to do our Avalon system. It's me again, your host, Michael Gibson, Director of the Eastern Region for Fortress Power. And then I have my co-host over here, Brad. I'll allow him to introduce himself. Yeah, so my name is Brad Year. I am the Southeast Regional um, and uh, been in solar since about 2016, working mostly on the installer side and on the sales side. So uh, excited to go over some of the stuff today on uh, the installation of the Avalon. Just like the previous webinars, this is to help you rethink the Avalon and how you approach the market. So this is not intended to be an overly technical webinar. We do have our technical webinar series that we have uploaded in our Trainer Central, and we will review that later. But the focus of this webinar is to give you insight on how to really present the Avalon, how to think ways to approach the market. So we're going to dive into our presentation. We're going to get started. And if you have any questions, please feel free to chime in. We do have a surprise guest for you guys, as I would like to say, if we can get him on screen later on for him to talk as well, because we just, here he is. I like to call him the good doctor, the good doctor, <laughs> Gio. He, he's my surprise guest. Um, Gio, just for our audience, please introduce yourself. Tell everybody who you are and what you do at Fortress Power. Sure. Um, my name is Avtandu Girgadze. You can call me Geo because it's easier. And uh, I am a sales and solutions engineer here at Fortress Power. Officially, I'm just a solutions engineer. But judging from how much I help uh, the sales department uh, so that they can better size the system for the customers. So the customers, if they have uh, technical questions, they can receive the answers. That's what I'm here for. So um, sales, the word sales in my title kind of slipped in because of that. Uh, yeah, so essentially, I am uh, a pre-purchase support so that people buy the product that they need, not something else. Well, we thank you for being on here. We're going to go through our review of our presentation. I'm going to get the slides pulled up. This way we can get started. And then we will add everybody in as, as time allows. So here we go. So the Avalon Answer has been a three-part webinar series. Part one was differentiation. Part two, expand your market. This final part of the Avalon Answer series, stream on your installations. So we're going to talk about, just as a means of review, some of the things in differentiation, just real fast. One of the differentiating factors of the Avalon is, is one manufacturer, 15-year warranty, modular design, DC couple for efficiency. There are some other things, but high level, that is what we talk about when we talk about physical differentiators. Also, the smart energy panel is a huge differentiating piece. We have the Avalon app, that's the differentiating piece. And I'll have Gio talk about the app a little later on um, in this video, when we talk about streamline your installation. Last week, we talked about expand your market. I'm going to pull up to the next slide. Brad, just talk about some of the things we mentioned in expand your market. Yeah, so, you know, with the, the unique design of the Avalon product, it allows you to go after maybe some of that generator market. So, for example, in like Florida, Texas, um, some of these places with more unstable grid, grid setups, uh, these generator companies do really well and in the past just due to technology or pricing or whatever it might be uh, solar's had a hard time attacking that market specifically and so with the avalon it allows you know it allows you to take a new approach expand your market and then solve new problems for customers beyond you know my energy bills too high you naturally can still address that but then also addre address what happens when my power goes out um, or if they already have solar, you know, it's great for retrofits. You can solve problems for those clients as well. Um, like my solar doesn't work when the power goes out. Um, so a couple different ways to, to expand the market there and then to add on to what Michael said with differentiation. There are a few products out there on the market 
that have really started to dominate a lot of the storage space. And uh, everybody out there feels the pressure to be able to offer these products. But at the same time, it makes it so that when your sales rep goes in and sits down at the dinner table with the homeowner, um, they're almost at a slight disadvantage because everybody's offering the exact same products with the exact same warranties. And it turns into that commoditization battle where who will go the lowest, the fastest. And naturally, the Avalon, it provides an avenue to protect your margins because the Avalon, from a technical standpoint, it stacks up with all of those major options and does pretty much everything they can do. Um, and But like I said, it does more with the load management features um, that are all integrated in as well. And so it allows you to be different, stand out in the crowd, and then also attack these different markets um, that you see, like the generator market. So when you look at the screen that we have, but we have some of the OM analytical data that kind of tells you what's going on in, in the solar industry. And you might see a lot of red, and it might seem like, why in the world would I show this slide? We want to talk a little bit about this. We have another slide that we want to bring up just to give you some different points of view when you look at how batteries affect your business. So I'm going to pull that slide up and Brad, speak to that for me, please. Yeah, so as you saw in the last slide, almost every market across the board, save a couple that were um, beneficiaries of some really targeted programs in their states, um, experienced year over year decline. And that's really strange for the solar industry. You know, we've had we've had changes in the past, like in Arizona, Nevada, where there's been a policy change that's temporarily depressed a market, um, but it's been a singular market. Um, you know, most everybody who is in the solar industry, save a few who have been doing it, you know, pre 2008, haven't really seen this type of consistent downturn in consumer behavior. Um, and so as we look at the market, it's like, okay, how, how do we attack this new market? Because everybody, most everybody anyway, their companies were born in growth or at least thrived in growth and became the companies that they are today through this growth trend that we've been experiencing in, in solar where year over year, month over month, it's not uncommon to see growth from, you know, nine, 10 companies in the exact same area. And so as the, the market dynamics change, we have to find new ways to attack the market. And one of, one of the places where there's just a lot of opportunity now is with attachment rates. So when I say attachment rates, what I'm talking about is the percentage of solar permits that had batteries attached to them at point of install or at the original permitting process. And so, for example, in Florida in December, I know this graph is kind of hard to see because I tried to fit way too much data probably on one little graph. So I apologize for that. We can send this out if, if anybody wants it. Um, but in Florida, attachment rates through the years have danced anywhere between two and 5%, uh, five being in the high range and two being at the more close to average range, quite honestly, for Florida. Um, and so what we see is there have been thousands and thousands and thousands of solar systems that we know for a fact don't operate when the power goes out. Now in Florida, um, that's a particular problem because we do have storm season, we do have hurricanes, so we have a need there for that power stability. And you know, many other markets share that same need, but for different reasons, whether it be unstable grids in you know California or brownouts or deep freezes that affect Texas, you know, whatever the major market is, typically speaking, there's an appetite uh, for some type of emergency power that solar hasn't effectively captured in most markets. Naturally, we have Hawaii, which has been a, a, a storage heavy market for years. We have California that's now exploding. I mean, I know that number said 33%, but some estimates for this year already have it double or even close to triple of that. We're pretty much California with NEM 3.0. Everybody's moving to storage. Um, so we, we do have these markets that we can look at where attachment rates have gone up really quickly because of policy or, or you know, well, mostly policy in the past. But as we're looking at this constricted market, we can kind of carve out um, a place in the retrofit markets, go back to existing systems, 
or exist, yeah, existing clients, existing customers, and sell that AC coupled option. And then as well with the new customers, since we know it's a lot harder to do that bill swap approach than it was when interest rates were at 2%, we can approach these new customers with a mind towards storage and having storage as the default so that we're not necessarily comparing apples to apples with the with the utility. We're now comparing apples to oranges, right? Where we're offering them something that solves new problems. We're not just taking care of their electric bill, but we're essentially offering them a generator with an ROI and the solar makes that ROI possible. Um, so anything you might add, you want to add there, Michael? Well, I just think it's important to recognize the last statement, generated with an ROI, that concept and that philosophical premise, because when you have a battery, and specifically, depending on what part of the country you're living in, you can get government funding or state-run program funding, where you're not only getting tax credit back for the solar PV side of things, but you will also can get revenue generated from the battery when you have these demand response type programs where they're called to use your battery. So there's ways to get money out of the battery that help you bring down the cost and make your return on investment relatively uh, very, very short. So that's just key for you. Now we're going to quick go over the Avalon system itself, do a quick overview. Since Brad and I have been talking so much, we're going to allow Gio, fresh off the cuff, kind of explain that uh, the, the Avalon system, which you see in this picture. Just tell the people what are the components of the Avalon and some of the distinguishing features. Just unmute yourself. You unmute. This is wonderful about live webinars there you go uh yes so we see an avalon system here with its key components so um let's look at the uh photo on the left you see the inverter and then the smart energy panel and then of course you see a big uh switch like uh, that is usually used to separate um the avalon system from the grid so the big shutdown switch is not part of the Avalon system as such, but uh, it is generally used. Um, there's a way of um, avoiding that usage in the future. So we're working on that too. So the system will uh, work even, uh, or will be even easier to be installed. You see a trough here. Um, that is also a common approach, although it is not needed. You could just use your deck cable. And on the right photo, we see the battery. Battery is something that is very close to our heart at Fortress Power because we started as the battery company. But now, as you can see, we are far and beyond from that. We are an energy storage solutions company. So that is what we're trying to do, deliver uh, with Avalon. And I may be subjective, but I would argue that we are delivering that with our Avalon uh, product. So. We have uh, a modular design for batteries, which means that based on your energy needs, you are able to um, size the system accordingly without having a bulky unit next to the existing unit that you will have, the minimum amount. Here, your system will grow in height to a certain point, up to 28.4 kilowatt hours, uh, or I'm sorry, 29. kilowatt hours, um, that's what's gonna happen. But then you can increase the amount of, so to speak, stacks uh, later down the road. So um, it is very easy to install these um, 4.9 kilowatt hour modules on top of each other because there are no special tools required to connect the power cables. They just snap in place. Um, also, you don't need to do extensive battery programming, putting the percentages in and everything else. The program, uh, that runs the Avalon system has the battery precautions built in both in the battery and in the inverter. So we tried to make it so that people don't have to put in any extra materials, any extra work. This is plug and play um, essentially with the whole home backup uh, capability. That comes from the inverter and the smart energy panel. So before we had um, 
whole home backup inverters, but once the power was going out, you could not cover the entire home because your inverter had a certain rating uh, beyond which it, uh, it could not go except for uh, when there was a surge. So what we do with the smart energy panel, we have load shedding included as a standard. So when you have load shedding included as a standard, uh, that means that you can power all the loads in your home, but not simultaneously. So if anyone wants to know more about that, we have the training material in our training central. Or we do webinars. We can do, if, uh, if the company requests, we could do uh, brief training um, through a, a meeting. But nonetheless, so this accomplishes the whole home backup with the actual whole home without the backup panel because the load shedding um, boards allow you to make your main or turn your main electrical panel into the sub panel so as michael said previously the smart energy panel is the cornerstone of this system of course this system um, covers both ac coupled and dc coupled solar of course, this system has uh, generator uh, capabilities, and I am saying, of course, because we were able to do those things with our previous systems. We could do AC coupled with Envy. Uh, we could do a grid and generator simultaneously with the uh, Envy as well. So that technology and that know-how trickle down to our Avalon system as well. Uh, this system can go outdoors and Actually, this system has an advantage over the others because when it goes outdoors, it can um, the battery can heat itself. So each battery module has a built-in heater. So it's difficult to tell because the number varies based on the battery um, performance. So if you're discharging the battery and uh, running the heater, the heater would achieve more rather than if you were just... Uh, having the battery on the standby and the heater was working. We have wireless monitoring on all of our uh, system components. So through your app or web app, you can see both battery, inverter, and the smart energy panel, which means that you are reducing your truck rolls and um, you can monitor the entire fleet. And you also tie the homeowner to their site on their separate homeowner app so you can see their system and all the other systems that you have installed. If something goes wrong or if something is about to go wrong, uh, you will be able to get the notification and evaluate what's going on, contact our tech support if so needed. So essentially we're trying to reduce the truck rolls to the site uh, when the customer is not happy about something. Um, and the customer will be able to uh, control the load shedding, change the programming on load shedding and monitor the system performance. I know that um, I was supposed to talk more about the installation of the unit, but we'll I'm get back to that. We'll, yeah, we'll okay. Get back to that. that that's that's the well, wonderful thing about having, you know, these type of conversations. So Geo eloquently went through the slide. So when we talk about yes. a winning solution, we have the whole home backup, the 200 amp pads through outdoor rated load shedding. Everything that you see on the screen that Avalon is capable of doing, and we've kind of went through that. We have the wiring diagram, just high level showing you how the Avalon gets wired together. As he stated, the smart energy panel is the heart of our system. So we really don't have to go too deep into this because we've done that in previous webinars. So I encourage you to grab that information. Brad, talk about this picture because the main thing we want to talk about is the ability to streamline your installs. So dive dive in. This is one of the installs that we've had. I believe you've been to this job site. Uh, Brad, tell us a little bit about what we're saying on the screen. Yeah, so this is this is one of the installs that we recently had in Jacksonville, um, Jacksonville, Florida. And you know, the Avalon really provides opportunities to to streamline the work on the site and then streamline the work behind the scenes. So a lot of solar companies that we've worked with, especially this past year, have picked up a lot of battery options, have picked up a lot of inverter options. It's not uncommon for me to, when I talk to an installer, to find out they offer five or six different inverters along with three, three to six different battery options. Um, and as, as I discuss with them, you know, kind of why they have so many options, you know, how they ended up offering all these options, um, you know, the, the one common thread is as well, op, you know, battery A does this and a battery C does this, but not that. 
Um, and so the Avalon really kind of can help you streamline the, the back end side of things because naturally we know that the, the more inverter options, the more battery options that you have, that's more logins, that's more portals, that's more training that your team has to take care of on the back end side of things. And so the Avalon, um, especially in this first picture, we see the smart energy panel and this will kind of help kind of explain you know, how the Avalon does really everything the, all these other battery options do, but it all does it with one solution so that you don't have to have five or six or seven different battery options with all of these trainings and all of these logins. And so um, this panel or, or the panel on the left as you're looking at it, that's the smart energy panel before any of the wires or before the grids interfaced or connected into it. Um, and then the picture on the right is after it was installed. Um, and so after some of the wires went in and the breakers were installed. And uh, this is probably where, where Geo, if you don't mind, you can go through and kind of talk about the breakers that were inserted here and why we put the breakers in those spots um, and kind of talk a little bit to that. So Geo, okay. before you go in that, I, I just want to make this statement. Because we keep talking about smart energy, smart energy. You, you mentioned low shedding and low management. We say those words, but briefly explain what low management it is. And then when we look at the breakers, we got breakers on the right side, we got breakers on the left side. What is the benefit to the installer? How does this help the installer streamline their installation process? Yes. Um, so. First, I'm going to um, answer Brad's question, and then it's going to make more sense to answer the questions about the load shedding and what makes this panel smart, so that we can make sure that we all agree that the word smart is not there for marketing purposes. <laughs> now, so uh, I remember there were, I think there still are the puzzle games that you need to look at two photos and to find the differences between them, and you get points for that. So it's the similar situation here, that you have two photos right next to each other, and uh, you need to find the differences. So difference one, I see that here are no breakers on the left. Here are two breakers uh, on the right. So one breaker is the grid input breaker. Uh, the other one, Michael, the Eaton one, yes. So that is the grid breaker, so that once this breaker is put in the off position, your inverter is, or I'm sorry, your entire Avalon system is entirely separated from the grid. Uh, one would ar argue that the shutdown switch would do the, uh, essentially the same, which is correct. The sh shutdown switch would do essentially the same. So um, I'm not familiar with the AJ uh, of the area where this was installed, but purely from the engineering point of view, you could skip this breaker. Um, but nonetheless, it's here, so I'm addressing what is here and uh, what, it, what it does. So it separates the uh, system from the grid. Now, I also see another breaker on the main bus bar of the smart energy panel. That is the uh, load breaker for the inverter. So inverter has two ports. One is grid, the other one is load. Load port is only energized um, when, the, when there is a grid outage. When the grid is not available, um, the inverter sends the power through the load port. Power can be coming from the batteries or the inverter, or, I'm sorry, or the solar. Um, so that power is delivered to the main bus bar of the smart energy panel, and that, that's why this breaker is there. So if you don't want it to do the, the, the thing that I just described, you just put this breaker in the off position, and so you are uh, separating the inverter load port from the smart energy panel. Third difference that I see is that in the bottom there are cables and there are two gray uh, breakers on the right side, right next to the revenue grid. Yes, right to, next to the meter. So these are two breakers for the inverter grid. So if you don't want, for some reason, your inverter to output um, energy to the smart energy panel and hence to the grid to supplement the load usage or cell power to the grid you just put these breakers in the off position and then where the load breaker so we covered the breakers now let's address the cables a little bit so um, on the breaker that um, that has this blue st sticker standard Eaton breaker for 200 amp service uh, there are two cables obviously those are grid input cables and then 
on the bus bar where the second smaller breaker sits, the inverter load breaker, you have you see two other cables. Uh, those are the cables that go to your main electrical panel, right? And in the bottom, we see the smaller cables that go to these orange green things, and those are our load shedding elements. So the ones that Michael is pointing at now, those are the dedicated ones for your generator, EV charger, and AC coupled solar. The ones uh, to the right to that, uh, those are the ones that the customer connected. So let now Mike, it's time to uh, answer Michael's question about what is so smart about this thing and what the low chatting really does. So our problem is that grid essentially is 48 kilowatts roughly, right? 200 amps, 240 volts. So 200 amps times 240. It's uh, 48,000, so you have 48 kilowatts. Whereas the inverter here that I see is 11.4 kilowatt inverter. And when you're installing uh, the system for the customer, the energy storage system, very rarely, you're going to have 48 kilowatts of um, output without the grid. You could have some paths through. You could have some um, supplementation of load usage. But when the grid is not available, um, it is very expensive to uh, substitute the grid both in terms of batteries and in terms of inverters. So we are trying to address that problem by, uh, or we have been trying to address uh, that problem with the backup panel. So what we were doing is that we were taking some of the circuits out of the main electrical panel, creating the sub panel where we were putting these circuits, and that those circuits were always getting the power may be when you're off-grid or on-grid. Whereas the uh, loads that are in the main electrical panel, they were not receiving any power when the grid was not available. Now, one would argue that you could do the same thing so that when the power is out, you would quickly run to the main electrical panel and you're not, you would turn off the non-essential loads, put the breakers in the off position. Well, there are two questions. Are you quick enough to run there so fast that you <laughs> don't overload the inverter? <laughs> and the second question is, even if you're uh, fast enough, do you want to do that? There should be an easier solution. And usually there is an easier solution. Low chatting in this case is the easier solution. So what this does is that you don't have the backup panel. You have your main electrical panel. But instead of the power going from the breaker to the load, it goes through the load chatting element and then to the load. So if you open the circuit by the means of the load shedding element, you're not allowing the load to get the power, right? Just like you would be doing when you're putting the breakers in the off position, or just like you, you would be doing uh, by installing the backup panel so the rest of the loads don't get any power. So this is automated. This is controlled through the app. And because it's automated, it's called smart. Because it is smart, it knows that when there's a power outage, this is what I do. When the battery hits this percentage, this uh, these are the loads that I enable. These are the loads that I disable. Um, now we don't have it, but later down the road, I'm sure we're going to offer to program this um, according to the time of day. So you could add uh, the load shedding capabilities to the time of use. So once you can control the circuits, you can control it any way you want. You could control it based on temperature, based on... I don't know, is it cloudy or not? So something like that. And of course you have manual override, both in terms of a small switch and that's redundancy, of course. Uh, and you can override it and change programming through your app from your couch. And before so anyone has talk that about, question. When we talk about really the intelligence and smart. So what makes this smart one, you don't have to be the flash, one, you don't have to go real fast to turn things on and off. So that that's that's one thing. Number two, what makes it smart, not only from an intelligence point of view, but what makes it smart is from a strategic point of view. Now you can use this as a combining feature in your installation. So it's giving you less components. As you've seen in the original picture, there's only three components that, that you see in the Avalon system. So it's allowing you to have less boxes on the wall in comparison to other installations that you may 
want to run into. So this is some of the things where we talk about making your installation streamlined. You're streamlining because now you have your DC type loads, your PV inverter and things of that nature on one side of the smart energy panel. Then you have your AC type loads on the uh, that you can manage. So you can do combining of AC and DC type circuitry in this device. So that allows you to speed up the installation pro um, process because you don't have the amount of labor. And labor oftentimes is a very expensive thing on a job, right? So these are some of the things that help make it a smart panel not only the ability to shift and load is talking about just the innovative design of the system this next picture we have the inverter this is just kind of showing you how the inverter and wired and everything that kind of comes along with it uh jill describe what we're saying in this inverter i know inverters uh this is our avalon inverter just describe what you're saying in the picture yeah so um I think it will be worthwhile to pay more attention to the picture on the left because it shows all the ports that you're going to be using. So I would uh, ask our viewers or attendees to um, zoom in onto this open area. Yes, correct. So um, all the way to the, uh, I'm going to start actually left to right. So uh, all the way to the left, you see there are two positive cables and there are two negative cables. So two positive cables um and two negative cables are for pv these are your mppt inputs so uh, they are separated into two banks positive bank and the uh, negative bank so um you have four mpts so you have four positive uh ports and four negative ports here clearly the customer has two strings of solar and that's why they're sending one string of solar to each mppt and they have two mppts in total deployed just like the amount of the strings that they have. Now in the middle, you see this green, green uh, uh, printed circuit board. That will be your communications board. So this photo was clearly taken before the communications cables were uh, put in place. So it is very simple. Those orange things that you see, you lift them up, enter the cable, let it go, and it latches in place. And there are, uh, I think, in total, five cables that you're going to have to install there. Um, and one Ethernet, so very simple to use. Uh, we also see the green cable connecting to the ground bar that uh, the inverter has. That would be most likely the uh, the battery ground because our batteries, because they're high voltage, they have to be grounded internally. So I am uh, I am used to, and we are all used to seeing batteries with positive terminal and the negative terminal. Now, the Avalon battery, because it's a high voltage system, also has a ground. And um, there's a ground bus bar right here, and you connect it to there. Also, you see um, four ports and three ports. So, group of four ports and group of three ports on top of the ground bar. Those four ports, those are the inverter load. So, you have neutral, L1, L2, and uh, primary earth. And for the grid, you have L1, L2, and neutral. These two ports are connected to the smart energy panel in terms of power. And when we were talking about that, oh, there's a grid port and it has the breakers, this is what I was referring to. So the three on the right side, those go to those smaller breakers in the bottom of the SCP. And... Um, the four to the left, those are load ports, and load ports L1 and L2 go through that breaker on the main bus bar of the smart energy panel. So you so, can yeah. do a lot with this system. Oh, and then I, I used the main up. one. I'm very sorry. Between the communications board and the MPPTs, there's one port for plus and minus that is battery plus and battery minus. So that's going to take a deeper dive. And this is the battery um, being put together. As you can see, this battery is in series. So Brad, when you have a battery in series, what does that mean to the, the consumer? Um, you know, honestly, to the consumer at the end of the day, um, it probably doesn't mean a whole lot to most of them, whether the battery is in series or parallel. Um, it does mean, typically speaking, I mean, this means that we're going to be working with a high voltage inverter. 
And this does allow us to put a higher quality battery together at a better price um, because now we have one BMS that's going to be running all of the battery modules as opposed to a BMS built into each individual battery. And then in addition to that, a high voltage hybrid inverter, it's just less expensive to manufacture than a, than a traditional low voltage. So it allows us to, to have a very high quality battery along with a high quality inverter at a competitive price for the consumer. I like Quick that thing, high wanna, quality um, battery. Go ahead, uh, Gio. Go ahead. Yeah, one very important thing. So Brad said that to the customer, it doesn't mean anything. Brad is correct. The customers don't notice it, but it gives you improved efficiency, which makes a lot of sense, especially considering how long this uh, product is supposed to go in the field and how much work it, it's supposed to do. So that two or three percent of efficiency means that you are not wasting the two or three percent uh, that you are um, generating throughout the lifetime of the energy storage system. So they don't notice that, but they should definitely care about that. And uh, yeah, that should be definitely communicated that high voltage systems, um, they provide improved efficiency because of the two things. One, naturally there are less heat losses in the cables. And two, and the more important one, is that when you have a high voltage battery, the inverter doesn't have to work that hard and the charge controller doesn't have to work that hard to adjust the voltage of the battery to the output voltage or input of the PV to the battery voltage. So that efficiency means that you can theoretically install less PV, not theoretically, but generally install less PV modules and have the same effect than if you had less efficient system with more uh, modules. So you have a battery system that's being put together in series, 15 year warranty, you're using the inverter less, by using the inverter less, you're actually extending the life of your system a little longer because you're not putting the demands on the inverter that you would in a different voltage system. So we're gonna go to our next slide here and this is just talking about expand your market, that was the one thing, but how can the Avalon help installers streamline their installation and operations. Brad, speak to this. How, how does it really help installers streamline their system? Yeah, so kind of going back a little bit to the previous point, because it, it ties kind of right in with it, is, you know, there, like I said, there's a lot of, there's a lot of companies out there offering lots of different battery options. And then even more specifically, there's a lot of inverter manufacturers, especially in the 48 volt space that offer you know, a thousand different battery options. Um, and so this really does kind of the Avalon, it's a, it's a complete system, um, all from one brand. Um, it, it streamlines so many of those processes because you don't have to worry about what battery you want to pair with the inverter. Um, you know, we're out there a lot. We see, you know, other inverter manufacturers that don't have their own battery lines. Um, they have really expensive inverters. So what they do is they go out and they say, oh, go buy these really cheap batteries so that you can use our inverter. And so it puts, a, puts the end consumer in a tight spot because they end up with a really low quality battery with a really high quality inverter. Uh, but the Avalon kind of allows for the best of both worlds. You get to have a high quality inverter, a high quality battery, and you don't have to keep wondering where the next battery deal is coming from for the inverter option or, or vice versa. And so it, it really kind of streamlines things in that sense. And then in addition to that, it just can be applied in so many different ways. You know, if you need an AC coupling option, it can cover that. If you have a retrofit that needs AC coupling and DC coupling, it can cover that. If you have a new install that's looking for an off-grid cabin that's not gonna have any internet connection, it can handle that. If you're looking for a basic net metered run of the mill system, somebody just wants a little bit of emergency power, it can handle that. If they need 150 continuous amps of power, it's a big home, they want a big backup system, it can handle that. If they just want a basic 7.6 inverter with 38 amps to, to back up, it can handle that. Um, so it's a really flexible system that can handle all of these individual scenarios that we run into and it does so, and like I said, as a quality product. And so the warranty exceeds 
you know, industry standard. Most industry standard right now for batteries 10 years, um, whereas the Avalon's 15. So, like I said, it, it offers key competitive advantages. It does what everybody else does, and then it also adds in integrated load shedding. Um, and then on the site. Um, so first off, it, str it streamlines things for the sales rep in the home because they know that the Avalon has an answer for whatever problems that homeowner is facing. And then when the installers arrive on the site, well, even if we back up a little bit before that, when you know when you have your ordering department or your warehouse ordering the equipment, it's really easy to know what you need because the system is ordered together. So you just need that smart energy panel, the battery, and the inverter and so it really reduces that book of materials right you might have a few things that the ahga requires um, like the install that we saw that ahga required a independent disconnect installed and there was no give or take on it that ha that had to be there no matter what um, i'm sure all of you guys have experience working with different ahjs and their standards um, but beyond the components required by the ahj you know what you have to order on each individual install and that doesn't change based on the install parameters um, so there's no additional components there's no um, you know extra uh, critical loads panels anything like that um, it makes it really simple and then when the installers are picking up that material from the warehouse um, they know uh, they don't need all these extra components so they don't have to worry about running back in the middle of a job site because they forgot xyz um, component um, and then when they get to the job site, it's just a much quicker install. This is a floor mounted battery um, that just stacks up battery, battery by battery. So a very, very quick process. Um, in the picture that you saw, they installed that battery in about 15 minutes. The battery modules weigh about 90 pounds. So a very, very quick process on the site. Um, they also, it's not, there's nothing that's extraordinarily heavy. There's no 400 pound mammoth that you have to reconstruct a wall to hang on. Um, the smart energy panel, it's easy to lift up, mount on the wall. The inverter, easy, lift up, mount on the wall. There's no, like I said, thousand pound gorilla hiding in the corner that you have to find a way to, to, to figure out. Just one ahead, thing I wanted to note. So you all noticed that the smart energy panel is, um, bigger in terms of size than the inverter but it's also lighter so don't be discouraged to lift it up it's not that heavy you may want to have your body with you but if you if you bench every day and stuff like that <laughs> i think you can handle that alone <laughs> at so our road shows about... i watched Oh, go ahead. I was just no, going to say, at, ahead, our, ahead, at, at, at all of our road, at our roadshow locations, I watch Geo fling around the smart energy panel by himself. So, um, now he's not he's, all, he's get, not all, than you not think, though. Mr. Geo, but, uh, yeah, yeah, he, he got a little bit more muscle than you think. But <laughs> one thing that we we've been talking about pretty consistently is the battery. We've been talking about the install. We've been talking about smart energy panel and combining. But one thing. I really want to hammer home, and I want Geo. I don't have any slides. Just kind of talk about since you've been to some installs, you've been down to Florida, you've been to North Carolina, you were recently in Canada. We've had some people over in Texas and some things over in California. So this is not vaporware. This is stuff that is actively going in, and we're doing research, reconnaissance, seeing everything that's going on. But one thing we haven't really talked much about in these Avalon Answer series is the software talk a little bit how the software helps with the commissioning process because there's going to be times that we all have to have a learning curve and learning how to install equipment that we haven't installed but once you have the equipment installed the next piece is the commissioning speak a little bit to that for me yeah so um the software does a very good job in following everything step by step in an intuitive manner so it's not like now you install the time um, or now you enter time and date and then you enter our whether it's like two inverters or not no it doesn't work like that uh, when you go to the app first and foremost of course you create your account so that you can log in you log in and it asks you where the system is being installed you can pinpoint it on the map you could skip it there are plenty of things that you can skip here. The, some of them are not that critical. For example, where the system is installed 
Well, does the app need to know where it's installed? No, it's just going to make your life easier. So you can look at the map and move your mouse pointer and uh, just t uh, click on that one. And it's going to show the status when you're managing your fleet. But you don't have to. You could skip this. Then it asks you, uh, it asks you about what the configuration is. So is it the meter, then the smart energy panel, and then the uh, load, or I'm sorry, the main electrical panel? Or is it the main uh, electrical panel before the smart energy panel? So your uh, utility meter, then the main electrical panel, then the smart energy panel, and then the backup panel. Uh, I already said that you don't need the backup panel, but in certain cases in California, you might need to have one. So it depends. But in general, in the mainland US, except for California, you don't really need it unless your AJ gives you a hard time. Um, so yeah, it, it asks you which one you have. And if you're curious, oh, hey, why do I need to enter this? Now, you can, it all, all, always has the, the smaller font written underneath it. So there, the, there will be the question. So why does it matter or something like that? You're going to tap that and it's, it's going to explain why does it matter and what happens if you have it in one configuration, what you need to do, and what happens if you don't have it in such configuration, what you don't need to do. For example, oh, when I mentioned that you could have main electrical panel before the smart energy panel, right? When it asks, uh, what it asks you to do is to move the CTs out of the smart energy panel and move it to the main electrical panel. That job takes like five, maybe six minutes to do, but it explains to you why you have to do that. So you're more comfortable doing it and understanding how your system works. Then it's gonna ask you questions. Did you make sure that all the breakers are in the off position? Did you make sure to remove all the tools? So after a long day at work, it's very easy to lose focus and make a childish mistake. So it, it has a checklist that goes through the questions so that you can safely commission the system. If you're going to make a mistake down the road somewhere, it's going to correct you. For example, if you're trying to commission it, but the system is not in the e-stop mode, which is emergency stop, that's how you start when you, you should have your system in the e-stop mode to start programming the smart energy panel, for example, right? It's going to ask you, hey, we cannot continue unless you put it in the e-stop mode and then tap commissioning. It shows you the graphics of how to do that. Um, then when you're entering the stuff for the inverter uh, and the smart energy panel, you first start with the inverter. You tell it uh, which uh, grid regulation you're under. So if you're not in California or in Hawaii, you don't have much to worry about because default is the rest of the United States. So most likely you're going to keep it at default and then continue um, to the smart energy panel. There's no much programming on the inverter because as I said before, most of the things, battery cutout voltage, battery emergency voltage, stuff like that, it's already written into the smart energy panel which controls the rest of the system. So generally you need to program every single aspect of your battery slash inverter combo. Sometimes you even have to program stuff on the battery. Here, none of that is present. You just enter the grid regulation. You use your device's date and time. So whatever time it shows on your phone, that's going to time. Uh, it's going to adjust to the time. Uh, once you tap that, use my current date and time. And then you just really what you program is how you want to automate the load shedding. If you don't want to use load shedding at all, fine, just skip it. And the entire process of commissioning and you being in the app will take like 10 or 15 minutes and you're done. So basically what I hear you saying is that this app commissioning process generally takes about 10 to 15 minutes. It has fail safes built into it. So if you need an e-stop, but you had it wired wrong, it will tell you. When it tells you about do you want to be on grid or off grid and things of that nature, there's a graphical interface and it steps you through it. So when it comes to the Avalon, we really try to make your life easier. So really, we want to see you win. We got product innovation with the Avalon. We have a revamp training portal. We do on-site and remote sales trainings. As I mentioned before, Geo has gone to job sites to help customers do their first install. And we're doing this all around the country because we want to provide a level of service to help you understand how to work with our high voltage battery. 
when we come to our training portal, we have a nice training portal that we've designed. You can either get it through our website. Uh, you just go to the tab where it says training and it'll take you to information. We have our on-demand webinars such as this one. You can catch a replay. We do send out the webinar recordings to those that attended the webinars. But as you can see, we got an unboxing um, video. We have something on our NV inverter. We got things about retrofitting solar batteries. So there is information that if you don't have time to get us live, if you register now, it gives you access to the replay of that information. Uh, we also have some upcoming webinars that are that we put there. So as you can see, it has the past webinar, then it has some things um, that we have in Spanish. So we really try to be bilingual in some of our trainings to help our counterparts that are in South America, Puerto Rico, Mexico, and places and the like. The other thing that we have is our training portal. If you scan this QR code, it will take you into the Avalon training so you can go and see everything that we have to offer there on the right hand side we have our avalon and um, authorized installer training and then we have our authorized installer training which goes over our 48 volt product line so we are constantly building this platform out adding new information so if you look at our LinkedIn, you will see that we've had some giveaways, or really not giveaways, but what I like to call Avalon Bucks. If you register into the class and you compete the class, there's been um, opportunities for you to get some additional savings and value. As I always mention, with our promotions, they cannot be combined. You can use them, but they cannot be combined. So, meaning if you got an, a thousand dollars of Avalon Bucks, you can use that before June 30th, but you cannot combine it. If you got awarded another Avalon Bucks, you would have to have two separate POs. But this is our online training, and we really want you to take advantage of the opportunities. You'll see Geo on there going through in great detail of the installer app. So he said a lot of stuff, but if it really went past your mind, you could just go into the training portal, read it, dissect it. We've been doing a roadshow. We've been all over the country. We've been in Vermont. We've been in um, New York. We've been in Florida. We've been in uh, San Diego. We've been all over the place. Um, here's another look inside the training portal, what type of information, what type of classes you have. So if you look at the top left, we have a certification class. That is the class that you need to take to become an authorized um, Avalon installer on your way to certification. So once you pass this class, then we require you to do a warranty install to complete the second half of the certification process. If you're looking for Avalon resources, such as the warranty, such as um, tech data sheets, it's all in here. If you want to see the UL um, testing information on UL 9540, UL 9540A, it's in here. If you want to just know how the product comes, there's Avalon unboxing video as well. So all of these resources are inside of our training portal. Now, Gio, if you could do me a favor, there's a question in the chat that if you can just go look at and answer that um, for me. Um, it's just talking about heating, and we want to just make sure we address that, whether that's now or later, but just, I just want you to take an opportunity to look at that. And closing, Brad, when we talk about the Avalon answer and everything that we have mentioned, so we talk about differentiation, we talk about expanding your market, we talk about streamlining the process. Just give me a synopsis of some of the things that we've covered in this three-part webinar series. Yeah, so I mean, it's been a, a fairly comprehensive uh, a series on on the different elements on how to approach this changing market, right? And that's really what it comes down to, is we want at Fortress Power to provide more resources and generals to, to help you guys win uh, and navigate the current market that we're in. So it, it really helps you kind of stand there out in the crowd, um, expand your market, you know, maybe approach customers that formerly weren't going solar, um, increase your top line sales by increasing attachment rates, different things like that, and then really making your life simpler on the back end side with commissioning, reducing service calls, and being able to, to really serve the customer and give them a better overall experience. So yes, that is part of the, the reasons why we say the Avalon is the answer. Now briefly, Jill, you have a couple minutes. 
and one to two minutes, why would you say in your own words that Avalon is the answer for many of our installer needs on the market today? In one minute, huh? <laughs> Because we, already we have ten seconds. Okay, we have because we have learned our lesson for, from the seven years of being in the business. Because we give them the easiest package as such, we give them the great support, and they have one phone number to call, one system to install, and if something goes wrong, one throw, uh, throw to choke. So that's the answer. You get the Avalon system. You just jump between the uh, main electrical panel and the utility meter with your Avalon system. And then if you want to have a generator, AC coupled solar or DC coupled solar, or maybe a, an EV charger, not in your main electrical panel, but here, that the, those are add-ons. But in terms of power flow, you're just tapping into the entire system to, and doing it in the most um, user-friendly way possible. You just take the cable and instead of it going directly to the main electrical panel, you take it to the smart energy panel and then you take another cable to the loads panel or the main logical panel same applies when you're doing load shedding you're not rewiring your home you're just jumping into that circuit from between the breaker and the load with your load shedding element and that's it so it is very okay. easy very simple you don't need a super extra tools or something like that to have made the cables or something most of the cables unless you have multiple stacks the cables that are enough for one stack of batteries up to six so up to 29.4 kilowatt hours that is included brackets are included um so yeah i i mean even compared to our other systems avalon definitely has an advantage well i want to say thank you to everyone that has been part of the avalon answer series and i would like to encourage you try it out as they say the proof is in the proof is in the pudding well we presented some good reasons why you should try it and i think you would be very thoroughly satisfied in getting the avalon system we've had great feedback we know the smart energy panel is a differentiator we also know high voltage is a differentiator we also know the Avalon app is a differentiator, but most importantly, we know that our people is a differentiator. And this is one of the reasons that I enjoy working for Fortress Power is that the people, the research and development, the engineers, our sales managers, we really do try to service you the best way possible or the most efficient way that we can service you. So. This concludes our Avalon Answer web series. And I thank you for stopping by. I'm Lotus. We do have your question. I forward it to Gio as you've seen, and we'll get you know our answer over to you via email. But I do thank you all for stopping by. And I'm gonna put Brad's information up here on the screen real fast so that you have it. If you want to get in contact with Brad, this is his, his information. You also can get contact with me. I'm all over facebook and the internet and things of that nature but we definitely appreciate you stopping by thank you i'm geo for participating brad thank you for participating and we look forward to our next webinar series we will make announcements so please go to fortresspower.com training and you'll see all of our upcoming webinar features and things of that nature have a great day thanks everyone